We don't support Marxists in Latin America. And any leftist leader who chooses socialism will be held accountable by the United States. Already, nine governments across South America, Central America, and the Caribbean are controlled by socialists. All of these governments, with only one exception, are also overtly and ideologically anti-American. All right, so Ted Cruz here is triggered by the inauguration of Gustavo Petro in Colombia. Uh, he's drafted legislation called the Caution Act, and it's seeking to condition the aid that the United States gives to Colombia because Ted Cruz has decided that they are now anti-American. Uh, they're also socialists, according to Ted Cruz. Uh, so let's break that down. According to Ted Cruz, it seems that uh, socialism is whenever a government does anything at all that's not in the favor of multinational corporations. And uh, whenever they are un-American, that basically means they're doing something to inconvenience US-based multinational corporations. Uh, a bunch of folks in the US right now are pushing red scare tactics. So John Mackey, the CEO of Hold Foods, said on a podcast this week, uh, the socialists are taking over. They're marching through the institutions, they're taking everything over. They're taking over education. It looks like they've taken over a lot of corporations. Yeah. It looks like they've taken over the military and it's just continuing. Very interesting, DeSantis also made comments recently uh, about leftist corporations uh, having too much power in the United States. Uh, so I, I would just love a list from John Mackey, like tell us which corporations have been taken over by socialists, please. Just incoherent and there's more incoherence. Let's go back uh, to Ted's rant. I think he makes a veiled threat here, let's watch. Colombians are well aware of what has happened in other Latin American countries that have elected or have seen leftists seize power. Cuba and Venezuela, for example. I don't wanna see Colombia follow the example of other socialist governments in the Western Hemisphere. We know where that leads. We do know where that leads. It usually leads uh, to CIA initiated and CIA backed coups. Uh, so it kind of sounds like a threat to me what Ted is saying here. Uh, let's not forget that uh, not too long ago, John Bolton said that the Monroe Doctrine is alive and well, right? This suggests that the United States controls foreign policy in the Western Hemisphere, including deciding which political and economic systems folks have in Latin America. But Ted is really categorizing Petro wrong. Let's watch. Petro is the first openly Marxist to be elected president of Colombia. Okay, Petro is not a Marxist. And as much as we know Ted Cruz is going on an incoherent rant here, it's really important to point out who Petro is, because they're really gonna keep pushing this narrative. So he described that he wants to bring Colombia out of what he believes is a feudal society. His top aides, I follow their work, uh, they're economists, and really what they're all about is reforming capitalism to make it work for everyone. Uh, he's brought together progressive groups. He's brought together traditional conservative groups. He's brought together conservatives and people from different social movements, and he became popular as a senator there because he exposed deep corruption, a scandal that's a very big deal in Colombia called Falsos Positivos, where over 6,000 citizens uh, were killed by the military uh, with the claim that they were army combatants when they were not. And so he's really fought a lot of corruption since then, since the Duque government, there have been killings of activists and leaders all throughout the country. And he ran on finding out you know, who was responsible for this. He's really an advocate for peace and Cruz is painting him as this guerrilla fighter, which isn't the case. Uh, there was definitely a time period in Colombia where everyone was taking up arms. But uh, Petro was a part of M19, which was never affiliated with the FARC, never affiliated with Marxists, never affiliated with the ELN, and actually partnered with the conservatives in Colombia with the interest of peace to write the new constitution. But Ted won't talk about that because he fundamentally just doesn't understand politically what is going on there. And he has no interest to because he's out to protect lobbyists, which have corporate interests in Latin America. But he definitely also does not speak Spanish. Let's watch this clip. Mexican President Lopez Obrador, Obrador. Obrador. 
He definitely practiced rolling his R's before uh, taking the floor of Congress there. Uh, he could have just called him AMLO. He didn't have to trip over that word. I think it's kind of funny. What do you all think? Yeah. That was awesome, by the way. <laughs> Seriously, that was a fantastic explainer. Please go okay. ahead. <laughs> so first of all, I'd love, let's talk about the funny parts first. Yeah. Um, Ted Cruz is Canadian. Uh, so <laughs> he's like, Petro Obrador. Okay, like, dude, just leave it alone. Okay. He, so secondly, uh, he's like, he's a Marxist. They call Obama a Marxist. Obama couldn't be more establishment if he tried. Mm -hmm. they, they've t totally taken away any meaning that the word Marxist has. But mainly he said socialist and, and so the Whole Foods CEO. And it, he's like, it, oh, I love the CEO because he's like, uh, socialists are taking over corporations. If right. they're socialists, why would they take over corporations? <laughs> okay, that doesn't make any sense, even under your definition. Okay, speaking of which, the most important part of this is the media never ever explains what a socialist is. They just a it ranges from Stalin and North Korea to Norway. So which one is it? Okay, <laughs> and so I, I had a guy the other day speaking of funny. Uh, I'm walking down the street and some douche uh, rolls up in a Porsche SUV and he, and he looked like a douche, I'll be honest, even before he said anything. And then he shouts out the window at me, socialist. And <laughs> he said it to you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what was I, your reaction? I laughed so hard, like <laughs> genuinely. I was like, ah. <laughs> he, he basically when somebody says, "Oh, you're a socialist, I'm like, so. I want things to be like Norway. That sounds pretty good, right? I said, look, as it turns out, I'm not. I call myself a democratic capitalist, and I could explain. In fact, I got a book on it. Okay, that'll come out at some point. Shameless plug. Okay, not really. Um, so, Jesus. anyways, I didn't even give the URL yet. <laughs> <laughs> Justicecomingbook.com. Okay, thank oh, you, Ricky. On, uh, so, anyways, um, but. Obviously, all socialism is, is a mixed economy where some things are private and some things are public, which by the way, could also be here in America. Because some things are public like the military, the police, and, and other parts of the economy. All right, Rick. Okay, um, I don't have a uh, book to plug, but when I do, I'll be sure to give it and blast it out, including on the TYT's Twitter account. So how I feel about this is whenever, and I like how uh, Jessica put this. It's a red scare tactic to continually just frame something in the way that has been politicized over and over for the last however many years. Jenk rightfully used the example of Barack Obama being labeled a socialist. Did we not even hear in the past, let's say eight months, Joe Biden being called a socialist? These are just scare tactic words. And even Anna, who I'm not gonna dignify the opponent who was on the losing end, was running for a congressional seat and called Anna Neil, this is one sentence, neoliberal, Marxist, socialist, leftist, globalist. All that, this, <laughs> seriously, all that this is, is them using a word to rile up their base who cannot tell one from the other. The only one they missed was communist. Now, to get to what Jessica and Jenk were talking about with the Whole Foods CEO, one of the weirdest things I had to learn about this guy was he liked being called a daddy of his workers, incredibly odd, incredibly weird. Some labeled him like a right wing hippie. You can be a hippie and that's cool. But the weirdest part is he's talking about how socialism has infected different parts of the business world when realistically how I view it is, it's a buzzword for his whole rhetoric, which we might get into in a second which was Gen Z doesn't want to work anymore, kids don't want to work anymore. No, 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 it's because people don't want to take the crappy jobs and pay that you're offering them and also how you're using heat maps to bust unions among many other things. Yeah, last things for me are, first of all, I love that description of Anna as a neoliberal Marxist. You understand what any of the words <laughs> means? Those two things are directly opposed to one another. Totally. Uh, and, and to Ted Cruz saying, are these governments, a lot of them are historically anti-American. Maybe because we killed their leaders yes. and took their natural resources. Yes. That might be a reason why. And then he turns around and ironically, he's like, and they better watch themselves. <laughs> yeah, I, I, gee, I can't figure out why they even would be anti-American. Right. Yeah, it's precisely the same script that they used in 1954 when the CIA backed coup to take down Jacobo R. Benz uh, occurred, right? They were saying, this guy is a raging socialist, he's aligned with Russia. All R. Benz was saying 
was we don't want our workers to be exploited and all of our land taken by US based multinational corporations. It's the same script, they're running in again, you know, half a century later, more than half a century later. But I do think we get caught up a lot in the ism, socialism, neoliberalism. These are not words that everyday people, if you stop them on the street, can easily define. Define, And we really lose ourselves uh, in just attaching ourselves to those words. I think whenever you use them, you should probably define them. I don't have a book to plug, but I did give a TED talk on this where I break down, you know, we need a democratic economy. Forget all of all of the isms. Workers are entitled to the value of the labor they produce. It's very simple. Uh, and I think moving away from the isms is something good. You know, what do you believe in? Do you believe in, in workers having, having rights, being paid a living wage, uh, being able to afford rent? Uh, let's talk about the issues. That's really where we win people over and we really lose people by saying, you know, they're all socialists, they're all bad. Uh, I think we really need to move away from that, but it's hard to when the right is talking about it all of the time. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.